In the previous lecture, we created the hello component. This is not a very useful component because it's not very customizable. What would be really nice if we could customize this message, for example, for internationalization? Let's go ahead and do that. What we'd really like to do is render a greeting in here. We haven't got a greeting yet, but we're going to add that right now. The next thing we're going to do is attempt to pass a value down here, and that's just like using an attribute. These are called props, which is short for properties. I'm going to pass down the greeting, and this one is just going to be hello. Let's save it off, and we can see this is not going to work. What we need to do is specify all the props, which is short for properties, that the component is going to receive. In this case, we're going to do that with the props key. There are a few different ways to define props. We're going to see those later on in the course. For now, we're going to see the most simple one, very useful for prototyping, and that's just by passing in the string, naming the prop. In this case, we're going to have a greeting prop. And much like data, computed, and methods, those are going to be available on the template automatically. Let's save it off and give it a try. Everything is working correctly, just as we expected. You may notice we're not using the v binding syntax down here, for example, using vbind. The reason is because this is a static variable, it's just going to be a string. If we use vbind, that's saying we're going to use a JavaScript expression. And what this is going to do is look for a variable called hello, which doesn't exist. We could turn this into a string, and that would be valid, so let's go ahead and give that a try, just to see how it looks. It's going to work just fine too. However, this doesn't make very much sense for a static variable, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. We can try this out again for another greeting. We might put something in here. Let's just go ahead and say hi. That's working just fine as well. What we're going to do now is make a refactor. We're going to move all the logic to do with numbers into a different component, and that's going to help us nicely encapsulate everything. There are a few benefits to this. At the moment, our current component is very, very large, and it's getting very complex. Its responsibilities are also a little bit blurry. It's doing a number of things, including rendering a button, rendering some greetings, having a V model, and rendering some validation. So let's go ahead and fix that one up. What we're going to do is start off by creating a new component. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to replace the hello component. We're going to replace this with one called num. And I'm going to go ahead and register that one as well. The next thing we're going to do is delete this template. We're going to change it a little bit. And we're going to have a prop called number. Finally, let's go ahead and render that number using interpolation. Again, the props are automatically available on the template. Finally, let's go ahead and try this one out. We're going to remove these hello components, and we're going to use our number down here instead of this div instead. I'm going to replace this one with num, and we're going to have to pass down our number, and that's very easy to do. All we're going to do is use the number prop, and this is going to be a JavaScript expression, so we are going to have to use vbind in this case. Let's go ahead and do that going to pass in our number here, and with a bit of luck this is going to work correctly if I use the correct syntax. Let's save it off and give it a try, and make this one a self-closing component. If we save it off, this is hopefully going to work. <laughs> Everything is completely broken. Let's see if we can figure out what is going on here. It looks like I've made a mistake somewhere along the line. What we need to do is bind to the number prop. Save it off and give it a try. Everything is working exactly the same. We're still rendering our numbers. What we're going to do is continue our refactor. We're going to move all of the logic to do with numbers inside of this component. That means the class, and for example, the isEven function. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut this one, and we're going to paste it up inside of our component. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to replace this one with a div, wrapping our number, and then we're going to place our vbinding expression to get everything nice and working correctly. Let's go ahead and save it off and see what happens. And of course, this is not going to work. The reason is because we're calling the getClass method, but we haven't defined that one. So let's go ahead and move that up into our template. That's down here. We're going to need get class, and we're also going to need is even. So let's go ahead and grab both of those. I'm just going to copy and paste, or cut and paste those, up into my component. We're going to go ahead and create another methods key inside of here. Of course, that makes perfect sense. These are methods, and we're going to paste those inside. And with a bit of luck, everything is now going to work. We can see everything is now working again. And this is a very high value refactor. We've managed to move all of the complexity to do with numbers into a separate component, and this is going to be reusable. A further benefit is we've managed to simplify our main component. The template is still exactly the same, but we've moved all of the logic out of here, keeping everything simple. Anything to do with numbers is now inside of the numbers component. There is one final refactor we're going to do. We can get rid of this extra div. What would be really nice is if, if we could use the v4 directive on the number component directly, and it turns out we can do that. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to move v4 down here, and then we're going to get rid of this div, 
and everything is going to continue working exactly the same. We're going to use v4 to loop over the numbers, then we're going to bind up to the number using vbind. Let's save it off and see what happens. Everything is still working correctly, definitely a good place to be. We saw quite a lot in this lecture, we are going to see many custom components throughout the coming sections, so don't worry too much if you didn't fully grasp everything. One thing you could do is try and create some more components, or alternatively, just keep going with the course, and we're going to see this over and over again, and you're eventually going to become an expert at making custom components. Large complex applications will have tens, hundreds, or even thousands of components, so don't be afraid to make smaller and smaller, more modular components to keep everything nice and maintainable and understandable.